All right, one of the main purposes for studying all this similarity and dilations concepts is to prepare for trigonometry, and that's what we're, where we're heading. So this lesson is going to talk about right triangles, specifically right triangles, and how their similarity works so that we can use this to head into the next, the next unit. So exercise one, we have two right triangles. We, how do we know that the two triangles are similar? If they both have a right angle and they both have one of the same acute angles, then they have to be similar because we have angle-angle similarity. So generally speaking, any two right triangles with a pair of congruent acute angles have to be similar since they both have a right angle as well. All right, exercise two. In the following diagram of right triangles, we have triangle ABC or surrounding. We have an altitude drawn from, from um, point C to, to hypotenuse AB. That creates two additional right triangles. <clears throat> we have triangle ACD up here and triangle CBD down here. Why can we argue that ABC is similar to ACD? We did something very similar to this in a previous lesson. What we talked about here is that both of those triangles, the outer one and the medium sized one, contain a right angle and that they both contain angle A and therefore they're similar to each other. We also can say that the outer triangle ABC is similar to this smaller version, CBD, for the same reason, because they both have a right angle and they both have angle B. So based on that answer, how can we argue that ACD is the same as CBD? Well, all triangles that are similar to each other have the same angles. So if triangle ACD has the same angles as, as the outer one, and triangle CBD has the same angles as the outer one, then they must have the same angles as each other. So they'll be similar by angle angle as well. All right, so if we draw those two small, smaller triangles in the same orientation as AB, we're trying to make them look tall, so to speak. All right, so that the longer leg is, is pointing is vertical and the shorter leg is horizontal. That's the way the original triangle was drawn. So that's the way we reflect and rotate these to draw them. So if I'm told that AD is eight, and that BD is 2. I can put those into the original diagram and know that the whole hypotenuse of the original triangle was 10. So if I want to solve for CD first, CD is a part of the medium-sized triangle and a part of the smaller triangle. It is not a part of the outer triangle. So in order to solve for CD, I need to use the two smaller triangles to do it. So if I put an X on the DC segment and another X on this DC segment, it's a short leg in one triangle, it's a long leg in the other triangle. To write a proper proportion, I need to make sure that I'm matching things. So I can either take um, the small leg over the large leg equals the small leg over the large leg, or I can do lo uh, long over long from large to small equals short over short from large to small. Either way, however you want to do it is fine as long as you match them up. You just have to make sure that you're matching. And so we have x over 8 equals 2 over x. x solves out to 4. Now, when I need to solve for BC, now I've got a different situation because BC is a leg in the full triangle and it's a hypotenuse in the smaller triangle. So now I do need to incorporate the big triangle because that's where segment BC is located. So if I use the outer triangle and I do short leg over short leg, it would be y over 2 or 2 over y, depending on which direction you're going. And then if I do hypotenuse over hypotenuse, it would be 10 over y or y over 10, again, depending on which direction you're going. Just make sure you're consistent, whether you're doing large over small or small over large. And you can solve that proportion as well. It comes out to a square root. So square root 20 would solve as a simplified version as 2 root 5. And we have our simplest form for that length. All right, so both of those relied on figuring out which sides corresponded to which, and if you redraw it, it becomes a whole lot easier to do. If you draw them in the same orientation, it just is so easy on the eyes. You can tell which is which. You can tell which is the long leg, which is the short leg. It's just much, much simpler to do. All right, on the next page, these problems can be a little bit tricky because there are three similar right triangles and two of them lie inside one. So that it, like I said before, it's a little tricky visually unless you separate them. So it's always a good idea as your first step to redraw the two smaller triangles to look like the bigger one. So if the right angle is on the top, redraw them so the right angles are on the top. And that's how, that's how this has been done. So in part B, if RU is 10, you can put that right into the big diagram and also into the two small ones. TU equals 5. Again, put it wherever you see a TU. 
So that would be here on the large diagram, and it would be here on the small one. And I want to find the length of US. Well, segment US is in the medium sized triangle, and it's so segment US is here in this medium sized triangle, but it's not in either of the other two. So what I want to do is take that US segment and compare it to the UR segment. Take this UR segment and compare it to the UT segment. All right, so I'm just using the similarity between these two smaller triangles. I couldn't use the bigger triangle here because US is part of the hypotenuse here, but it's not the whole thing. So I need to use the two smaller ones in order to solve this one. So if I do that proportion, I'm going to get x over 10. I'm going to get 10 over 5. And those two will cross multiply to give you 100 equals 5x and x equals 20. So we can get the length of us that way. That would have been a hard problem had you not redrawn it. It's a lot easier to see if you redraw, relabel, and then try to pick out the matching sides. OK, so sometimes they are phrased without a picture. So sometimes you see it in just in word form. And if it's just in word form, make a picture. Draw it. It's so much easier to do if you draw it. Triangle MNP, that's the outer triangle here. P is the right angle, so you put the right angle on. Altitude PL is drawn to the hypotenuse. Draw the altitude from P and label that point L. All of that happens first. Just draw it. Once you have drawn the triangle, draw the two smaller ones to look the same as your bigger one. And that's going to help as well. Okay. And then once that's all drawn, that's when you can start labeling what you know. ML is 9. LN is 3, and it's not to scale, but that's because you just drew a random right triangle to start with, right? You didn't know what the segments were going to be. Totally fine. All that matters is the numbers. It doesn't matter whether it looks to scale or not. That 9 and 3 is going to add up to 12, and so the hypotenuse of the big triangle is 12, and we can work off of this. So when I go to solve for PN, PN is both a long leg and a hypotenuse. It's a long leg of a big triangle. It's the hypotenuse of the medium-sized one. So PN is also labeled with an X here. And so I need to find the two triangles that contain that. So I go X over 12, which is long, it's hypotenuse over hypotenuse. That first fraction is hypotenuse over hypotenuse. And then the second fraction, 3 over X, is long leg over long leg. By drawing them with the same orientation, it is super easy to see that X goes with 12 and 3 goes with X. So do that step. Do not skip that step. Draw the original reorient them so that you have all three triangles pointing the same way. All right, and then we don't want to forget that two figures are similar only if there's a way to map them. So this is just kind of wrapping that, con that concept up. In this diagram shown, we have altitude TW, and it's been drawn to hypotenuse RS. And so that's over here, right? We have right triangle uh, TW right here, altitude, going this way. And we also have angle-angle similarity to show that these two triangles are similar. We've talked about that before. So now, instead of just using angle-angle, we want to try to find a set of a set of motions, a set of rigid mo or a set of transformations that will map these onto each other. So you can definitely use tracing paper to help here. But what we want to do first is reflect that smaller triangle across R W. So that takes this triangle and reflects it up into here, and that's drawn for you on this side. Then we would take that triangle and rotate it. And if I rotate that triangle by a WRT angle, that's this amount here. And that's going to rotate that triangle into point R. And so now this RW segment lies on RT. You picture that? Picture triangle RTW rotating in so that RW lands on RT. And then finally, we just want to dilate. We want to dilate that smaller triangle out so that it matches the bigger triangle. Okay, so the first thing that happened was it reflected out, so RW was shared. Then that RW segment rotates onto RT, and then it dilates out. And that would be our transformation.